Good evening, and welcome to the February 28, 2024 meeting of the Wareham Finance Committee. We are uh, in person in room 27 of Wareham Town Hall. It is 6.30 p.m., and I would like to call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll. Yep, Norm Scoggin. I'm here. Nancy Rose. Here. Jerry Stepanski. Here. Jerry Smith. Here. Heidi Churchill. Here. And Julie Moran. And we are just missing at the moment Dom Camerano, but the, there are six of us here. So we have a quorum. All right, so first item on the agenda for tonight, and you should have all received copies of this, uh, is approval of the January 31st and February 8th, 2024 minutes. I sent around the uh, new and improved way of approving minutes. Uh, are there any corrections on January 23rd? All right, are there any corrections on, on February 8th? All right, in that case, the minutes are... I move to accept the minutes. We don't have to move, apparently. <laughs> you don't, um, I think you still have to move them. Okay. You, can, them. you can, but let, let's, let's try it this way. This is Robert Hill's order. Uh, so they are approved because there are no corrections. So approved is written. All right, uh, next item is report of the chair on re approval of payment of Kelly Barrasso invoice in the amount of $87.50. Uh, for those who don't know, or as a reminder to the rest of us, we uh, agreed um, a few months ago that the chair would be able to approve those invoices in order to move them through quickly. So I have already submitted that invoice to um, the town accountant, and I, I'm just reporting back to you that I did that. Uh, next item is approval of a W.B. Mason invoice in the amount of $99.98 for paper to print the fall town meeting report. This was not subject to our agreement, so I will... Uh, I will entertain a motion. That it, it, as also as a reminder, we went down from spending well over a thousand dollars to print town meeting reports to a hundred dollars. More than that. <laughs> yes, a hundred hundred dollars for this one, um, thanks to the great work of the town administrator's office in actually getting the copies made for us, and also it was a very short report, relatively speaking. So moved. Uh, right. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. All right, and it passes 6-0-0. Zero, zero. Okay, so the, the next item is the annual town meeting warrant, uh, which we have, uh, you should have gotten a copy of today. Um, as soon as I got a copy, you got a copy. Uh, the main thing I will point out is that it doesn't have as much uh, but as has been the case in the last couple of town meetings, we um, a lot of housekeeping and fairly straightforward with a couple of citizen petitions. Um, the special town meeting will also have a lot of routine items on it. There may be other things as well, but um, that just opened last night, or it opens uh, March 5th, opens March 5th, so we will have, um, we'll have the full thing in a few weeks. Um, in the meantime, we do have with us tonight Judy Whiteside, the chair, chair of the select board, to discuss uh, some of these routine matters that were put on the, the warrant or will be put on the special warrant um, by the select board. We're not going to get into the town administrator requests or the budget or anything like that tonight, but if you would please come forward and identify yourself for the record, I'd appreciate it. Judith Whiteside, Chair of the Select Board. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. What, what do you have for us? Well, I have the um, grid for, which you've got as well, for the annual town meeting. Um, there are two petitioned articles. I believe one of them may be not moved forward by the petitioners when I had a discussion with one of the members um, about the impact of a $25,000 appropriation um, and what it would do to a balanced budget. Um, and so that may disappear. Um, Article 1, election of officers, is a routine thing. You just say, yeah, it certifies the, you know, the elections, that kind of stuff. Uh, recurring business is the, the standard. Um, compensation of certain elected and appointed officials, that's the moderator at, I can't even remember what 
get it's it. not much. It's so, like 20 or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. 120. Yeah. yeah. So, and she's worth it, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. The revolving funds, you will see a nice new presentation the, from last year. Last year's was this one whole page, and it had like 30 lines on it. So, even with a magnifying glass, mm -hmm. I couldn't read it. But Derek was able to squish it down to what you see there, and they all comply with the um, DOR requirements. So that he will be addressing during his budget presentation. Um, occasional reports are the Finance Committee report, Planning Board report. There will be a, probably a report from the uh, Bylaw Review Committee and any other committees that have reports to bring to the town meeting. The Capital Plan, that will be brought forward by uh, the Capital Plan Committee. Budget will be brought forward by Derek. The EMS will also be brought forth by Derek. Upper Cape, I have, have you seen his presentation yet? We have not seen this year's mm -hmm. presentation. I'm okay. about to reach out to him to have him come before us. Okay, because I, um, Dom shared a couple of pages of it with me, and it's a wonderful presentation. Oh, yeah. Mr. Forger does a great, great job. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Enterprise Fund for Wareham Pollution Control Facility. Uh, and then Tremont Nail Remediation Project. There's one here and there's one on the special. Those are going to be to pay up and pay off to get us out of what we owe on Tremont Nail. Um, the Community Preservation Re Fund Reserves are simply bookkeeping. We move money from place to place to do whatever needs to be done. Um, the petitioned article for raising the number of marijuana retail licenses to above three probably has some complications due to the law, most of which I don't honestly understand. We are, we are allowed a certain number based on our liquor licenses, and you have to round up, and we had to round up from 2.27 or something like that to three. So we have three under the law and the state law. Yeah. Um, the way the article was petitioned mentions um, ta -ta -ta -ta, applicable laws to blah, 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 and then to amend zoning bylaws. So that requires a hearing um, and a presentation before the planning board, among other things. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen to that because. Um, I just don't know what's going to happen. With that Do you, does yeah. your office um, have contact information for the petitioner? Because we'll ask them to come forward as well, of course. Yeah. It's right on the top, up here. It's Jack Orinta. Yeah, I, I saw the three, and I thought I wasn't sure how they base it. I didn't realize liquor licenses and all that. So, wouldn't they have to petition the, the state? Oh, that's two. Okay. Wouldn't they have to go to the state first to try to get that number up before? Well, see, that's what I'm really unclear of. Alan and I had a long discussion about this because he's more up on weed than I am. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. No, it doesn't. <laughs> she says I'm We're not going to go through that out there. <laughs> we won't draw any conclusions. Yeah. Um, and it, there are locations in town for medical uh, marijuana. They were specifically outlined years ago when marijuana legalization became on the plate. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the answer to the question. That's why I said I think this is a bigger bite than the petitioners actually thought they were going to have to go through to get it done. Yeah, when I saw I can't, that was I a, can't speak to yeah, it. Yeah, I saw it. I said, I don't even think this should be coming in front of us at this point. At this point. Yeah. It is, it is it is it's a citizen's yeah. petition. I yeah. have no... And I understand yeah. that. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not disputing yeah. it being yeah. on there. I just said, yeah. I don't know if this is making a whole lot of sense at this point. I, I would say that, in my opinion, and you know, for whatever it's worth, the more places that are in the business of selling boots, um, the less your market share is. And we know that in lots of uh, cities and towns in Massachusetts, there are already some retail locations that are shut. I think mm -hmm. Northampton lost either two or three. So. You know, what is the appetite for them? That sounds bad, too. <laughs> um, you know, how much can the market bear? Right. And because virtually every city and town in Massachusetts now allows it, what 
we saw in the beginning right. was we were one of the first in Massachusetts, so we got the, you know millions of people coming here. That's not the case now. Right. So right. the other thing that's really interesting about them is that we never collected an impact fee. Yes. Thank you, because the town of Uxbridge had to give back a million some odd change mm -hmm. right. because they couldn't document how they were spending that impact fee to prevent, you know, um, the impact of having yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. having children use um, marijuana or you know any any of the other issues that could come up with it. So thank goodness, Derek mm -hmm. and. You know, we never we never took them, so that's not an issue. Yeah, and I, I wish people. I saw some things on Facebook about where's all the cannabis money going. You you may have seen that. And yeah. when I first opened, what do we get between one point two and one point three million dollars? Right. Yeah. Now, that's like one fifty is being budgeted. Right. So you can see how the market has. Yeah. In the closing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's did fact. Presentation. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. So. so I can't answer any more about that. Um, the one about the. Um, $25,000 for the John Dixon Recycling Center. Um, that also came in as a petition article, but several of the people who signed the petition are actually on the recycling committee. So I talked with um, somebody today from the recycling committee and explained that they already have funding through grants that they apply for, that go into a revolving account that they have access to, um, and that they have other they have other fundraising. You know, if you go there and you pick a book out of the closet, you can give them twenty five cents, or you can give them a buck, or you know, whatever it is. Um, people have uh, donated money for televisions and computers that work that have been given to them. So they have sources of income, and I've asked Judy to be more specific for me tomorrow and I'll send you that information when I get it um, about you know how many funds there are and what the balances are I believe based on my conversation with this individual that this article will not be brought forward by the petitioners at the town meeting and I explained how they would have to do that because it's on the warrant right. we have to look at it sure. mm -hmm. But I've given you the contact information. I will reach out. Okay, yeah. excellent. So you have the contact information on those. So if you want to go quickly over the special, yes. I can the one you threw. Mm -hmm. what, what, what you know. Yeah. So there's going to be budget transfers, as always. I don't know what they are. There's the fund the parking program, the capital program, which may be stuff that we have to do before this one goes through, because the special, the minute it's certified, we can act on it as opposed to the annual where we have to wait until July 1st or we have to wait for the Attorney General or the depending d yeah legislature mm -hmm. um, the transfer of funds Derek I don't think there are any leftover um, bills from last year but there were some surprises last often, year often there's something yeah mm -hmm. uh, the revolving funds is the peg access for WCTV I will tell you that since May of this past year, um, I have been authorized by the select board to negotiate with WCTV on their expired contract. They have a dual, they have a contract that covers both Verizon and Comcast, but it has two expiry dates in the contract, which to me is not particularly understandable. The one for the Verizon portion expired March 15th of 2023. So we don't have a contract for the Verizon money that we get from, from Verizon that we are then pass on to WCTV. Because we don't have a contract, we can't pass on that portion of the money. Now you saw that happen in the October town meeting. They got less money than had you know, than actually was that we had collected, but that's because the contract has not been renegotiated and signed. We now are in a position where we think that um, we have come to an agreement about who's doing what and how it's getting done. Um, I believe that WCTV understands that they are using, that they are our contract laborers. Um, 
they are funded virtually 98% by the town of Wareham through either the Comcast or Verizon contracts that we have. So I'm hoping that that, that money, and I honestly don't remember how much it is, but that would, would be coming forward. There is one union contract, I don't remember who it is, um, might be water pollution. I don't remember who it is, but it, it's not, it's nowhere near being ready to come forward, but the article is on there in case the settlement has, or in case they've agreed to the contract. And we've done that before yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Article A is the duty of the town clerk. The bylaw review committee came up with some suggestions, um, and one of them was actually made by a pre our previous town clerk, Deb Gremo, which is a bylaw which would allow the town clerk to use his or her editing skills to either renumber, reorganize, re, you know, remove that kind of stuff, non-substantive changes. Mm -hmm. So um, the, it says to ensure consistent and appropriate sequencing, numbering, lettering, and formatting in compliance with the current document. And right now, it's a huge mess. And it is a huge mess. Right. Um, there are some places that dis there are actually two division teams. Mm -hmm. um, Without having to go back to the AG or right. anything. Yeah. Yes. So once it has been straightened out, which is part of what the second article is, um, the clerk will be able to go in and say, oh, oops, we shouldn't have two 13s. It should be this. And you know, it would be advertised and, and let the public know what needs to be done. Um, again, other towns do it, and I think it is well beyond time <laughs> to do. Um, Article 9, oops, oh, I don't have that one. Um, Article 9, I guess, is, uh, I call it the dump article. The, again, the bylaw review committee came up with, I think it's 12 bylaws, like, please don't fly a kite in front of a horse. <laughs> Don't store your casks on the sidewalk. Do not throw stones at horses. Mm -hmm. um, don't do, th and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that is, is sort of fun to read, but it bears absolutely no semblance to today's reality. Some of the things that the bylaw review committee are recommending, well, they have several. Um, they are now covered by state law and all of the things that they are recommending be dropped have been reviewed by town council as well as any department head who was impacted. So for instance, the assessors were asked about street numbering because there's a bylaw about how to do street numbering. Um, there's some one the police chief is still working on talking to them about some of the, the things. So that's a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. What will happen is when that is approved by um, the AG, which may take, the, the, our October town meeting has not yet been certified by the AG. They asked for a 90-day extension from the December date that they had. Do we have a choice about that? No, <laughs> no, which is too bad. But what hopefully will happen is that both the, the town clerk article will pass, because it's in the special, it could take effect immediately, and that these drops or dumps would also be able to take effect immediately. Then the bylaw review committee can go back in and say, for instance, um, the wetlands, the waterways were completely rewritten by Gary Buckminster a year and a half ago. Um, the conservation agent has, they actually hired somebody to redo their bylaws and they may actually take them out of the bylaws and make them part of their, what they do, okay? Uh, that will come before the town meeting in October. It's, they're not ready yet. Um, so there, there are things that, that will make the bylaws much more user-friendly. The index to the um, document is not part of the document. However, when you really want to be bored or you want to stick a pencil in your eye, take the index and see if you can find anything. Look, try and find something, you know, how, how, do you, how do you get a street number? You can't find it in the index. It's really embarrassing. There's 17 different types of type font. It, it, it's really a mess. So 
that probably will be something, that's not part of the document, but that probably will be something that somebody has already typed up, by the way. Um, so that hopefully will, will go forward. Tremont nail remediation, again, is part of what is going to be before us in the annual, and this is um, the debt payment. Return funds for CPC, $20 from the um, dog park, $8,500 from the undesignated fund from the Wee Wee Ridge, uh, that must be wrong, Ridge Spring 2012 meeting. Um, and, and then we also 40, have four hundred dollars Swift Speech Engineer. Um, yeah, there are a whole bunch. There are a whole bunch of things that are, would be coming back to CPC right. because they were not used. But there, I understand there are no grants being proposed from the CPC at this point. Is that right? Yes. For for this this town meeting. Well, that's the case at the moment. Okay. Um, there is actually a need for some CPC money, and I believe that members of the CPC committee would be willing to move forward to, you know, break their routine and come forward with a recommendation to town meeting to, to the special to complete a project that is very important for the town. And then also on the special, we've got, the, you've already been before us before to talk about the bylaw change for this committee, number of members. Yes. And the charter change, um, right for the annual it town move budget. the date of the annual for the budget presentation to February twenty eighth. I think. Yeah, we ended I think up. that's what. Yeah, Alan wanted to go a little further, but I that didn't make sense. And and Derek didn't want to go further than the February twenty eighth. And then at your request, there's a um, bring your committee number from nine to seven, and that would be a bylaw change. The first one is a charter change. The second one is a bylaw. Does anybody have any questions on any of that? You just asked the one I was going to. All right. Thank you very much. No Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, nothing to vote on there at this point. Um, it, and just for anybody in the public who's watching and doesn't know this, ordinarily we have before us every single uh, town art warrant article. Um, at some point, we generally don't vote on the day we hear them. We vote, we have some time to think about it, maybe ask follow-up questions if necessary, discuss, and then we vote later. So there's nothing to vote on tonight, but uh, this does does look like um, at this point anyway a little bit lighter town meeting than we have been having lately. So that might mean that we do not need to meet every single week, which would be nice. Um, but we'll we'll see who I can get. Uh, lined up. I don't, actually don't have anybody lined up for next week, so we may not be meeting next week. Okay. And that would help with your conflict. Uh, all right, next item is um, any debrief from the budget workshop. Does anybody have any observations or thoughts? Uh, we Obviously, we're not voting on the budget now. The budget is actually not quite finalized yet. We will have Derek back to do his whole thing for us again. Um, any, any questions or thoughts? I thought the workshop went well with all the department heads. I mean, mm -hmm. you couldn't have asked for, it went extremely well. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I thought Derek's, and I told you this, Derek's budget presentation to the selectmen, I got more out of that than when he's presented it. And like I told her, it's because I probably, because I couldn't talk and ask questions. So <laughs> well, <laughs> I just I had to sit there and listen. Yeah. The other but it, it, I, I got a lot of stuff out of it when I watched it on TV. Yeah. Well, the other thing about that, I think, is that B Derek has to do that budget workshop when he when he's just getting those numbers. I mean, yep. he has to throw that together. So he didn't have time to do the nice, pretty bells and whistles that he did just a few days later, actually. And we will see that presentation, I'm sure, um, before before town meeting, before we vote. Um, I thought it was great having in this room. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought yeah. so too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's more efficient, a lot more efficient. Right, right. Yeah, and people didn't have to leave there too, too far from their offices for the most part, except That's Council right. on Aging yeah. maybe. And, yeah, and, and, and it, it went well. All the department heads presented well and uh, answers all, all our questions. I, I listen remotely. Um, I liked how we talked, we referenced a grant manager. Um, that was something we really need. I, I was 
pleased to hear the IT report. Um, I recall our uh, consternation a year ago. Concerns, yes. Um, and so I think he's done a great job. Um, really has made a lot of progress. Uh, cybersecurity, you know, swapping out those uh, the old laptops that we were concerned about, and and the, uh, you know the um, duplicate authentication. So that uh, made me feel very comfortable. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. disconcerting every time I see an article about a town or an agency or uh, you know anybody who's yeah. who's been hacked and what a disaster that would be for our town. Yeah, yeah and I thought the department head presentation went excellent. You know, when Derek did his next budget presentation, I saw a couple of things implemented, which I was very pleased to see. And it, these weren't really big things, it was, you know, but it was mm -hmm. positions, you know, that I, I think the town, in the departments, just, yeah. uh, you know, need. I think, too, the, the, I think one of our concerns, which was voiced a number of times, was succession planning. Yeah. We've got aging, people aging out, and it's a challenge. Yeah. I mean, there's the, the back and forth about how difficult it is to hire folks. They're looking for the money. Um, so that's, I think, a, just a big challenge for all of us going forward in, this, in the town, in most towns, I'm sure, mm -hmm. but particularly here. So, yeah. All right. Um, next item is a report of the chair on meeting with representatives of Wareham Public Schools regarding a possible override request. That meeting was on Monday. Uh, it was, I thought, a positive and productive meeting. I don't think there will be an override request forthcoming. I don't think that either solves our problem or is likely to be successful based on this town's long history with, with turning down overrides. But I do think uh, we continue to be in conversation with the schools about how we can come to a, a good understanding of what the town can do and what the town can't do and how the school's needs can, can be, best be met. Yeah, in, in, in January, I listened to the January meeting um, and, and to, with Derek talking about the surprises on the state funding. Right, it was, um, that's a big part of the problem. Huge problem. That we, yeah. Did, yeah. we did not get either on the, either for the schools specifically or other state aid was not what mm -hmm. we had expected or hoped for. And, and, and it, it puts us in a terrible bind. It, it, and in know. some respects, we're almost, I wouldn't say led to believe, but we had, we were optimistic based right. on what we heard coming from the state. So that's for communities like ours. That's tough. And my thought was, is oh. there, is there some way we can revisit this? Is there an appeal process? But well, it's and it, and very th troubling. Those yeah. numbers aren't final. Yes. And that's it, uh, yes. the ongoing challenge is we don't actually know exactly what we have to work with. But, right. but the initial, the preliminary numbers are not good. Mm -hmm. no. and, uh, and we just have to be realistic. You know, we, we can't spend money we don't have. Yeah. Yeah. And the state might not finalize their budget till what was last year? was August it's or August. September. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So, you, you know, you got to go with what you have. No. Yeah. Matt. Uh, no, no, I was going to say, they, they jacked up the uh, reimbursement last year. For the school department, and that's right. Now they're giving us less money on top of it. So I know. It's, yeah. How do they expect us to tax, work? No, no, no help to us. No. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, if the state's budget isn't finalized, does does that mean that they the, their focus now is on community colleges? Can they change that back a little? I think or I think they could it out? negotiate something different. They could change the word, and, and I'm sure that there are there are lobbying efforts going on in oh, that regard. Sure. Mm -hmm. We don't really have any lobbyists here. Um, Except our state reps. Yeah. So, yeah, reach out to your state representative. Yeah. If, yeah. if you're uh, dissatisfied with how, how it's going, that's the only only this place we have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a big thing, and I, and I think everybody needs to understand that it's not us, it's not uh, wanting not. It's not us not wanting to give the school money. We no. just don't have yes, the money to give right. them. Exactly, exactly. And 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 I they think need to reach out to the state. It's not right. the school department. It's not us. It's it's the state. It's and, o it's over our heads. And the, and you know the point. The, I think the point has been well made that the town has cut and cut and cut from right. the departments, especially in this building. Right. We're staff. We we have a larger population and less staff. Than we've mm -hmm. had in the past, and I don't, I, you know, people want their services. They don't want the potholes left unfilled. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you don't, if you don't have the money allocated, it can't be done. Yeah. So I and think we we level funded, basically level funded every department in the in yeah. the town. That's right. right. 
with the, you know with the exception of um, incremental increases for pay and so forth, like right. contractual. Con obligation. Contractual. Yeah. yeah. Right. We don't have anywhere. We can't get blood from a stone. And we can't. And because of Proposition Two and a Half, we cannot get we more money yeah. out of yeah. the taxpayers. And the taxpayers, what we keep hearing is the taxpayers don't have more to give. So that's sort of where we are. Grant yeah. manager. Grant manager would be good. It would be good to have that source of funding. And mm -hmm. well, I saw this. You know, the state get their bill coming forward about the municipalities doing different taxes: mail tax, room tax. Right. Did you see the latest one they want to do now? Excise tax. Yeah. Increasing yeah, the excise. Five percent. Yeah. They they be put on the town. The towns can do it individually. Right. Yeah. But I'm just not sure how many times you can go to that well. Right. You know, I mean, that's something. That's right. All right. Um, so, uh, Brianna, I assume that you can hear us now, and we are at the point of this um, this agenda where we would like to hear from you. So, if you can agree to um, be a panelist, can you? Are you able to do that, Matt? Then we will be able. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can't see you. Do we just see a okay. B? But we can hear you. Okay, I don't know if I can for some reason because of the way the Zoom is set up. I can't turn my camera on. Right. Yeah. Hold on. Um, Take yeah. the invitation. Thank you, Jessica. Did you just get an invitation to be a panelist? Yep. She's now a okay, panelist. Okay, you're a panelist. It, it, usually it's down in the lower left hand corner. There's a camera picture. And if you. There we go. There, we can see you now. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome. Um, so, I. I'm a little laggy. Um, I've been a bit we did pay off game tonight that we found out about last minute. Um, so that is where I am. Okay. But I am Brianna King. I am currently a licensed social worker. I work at um, Royal Health Group in Buzzard Bay. Um, very, very involved in the community. I volunteer with a lot of different things. Um, basketball, sports. I'm on the Wear and Tigers board. Um, I'm a 2011 graduate of Wareham High. I've lived in Wareham since I was in fifth grade. Um, and I would love to be able to join the finance committee to bring a younger perspective, um, and kind of a different approach to what and who this community, I'm a different demographic. Um, I guess you would say. So I really would like the opportunity to join and be able to help promote a good change for the community. And uh, I understand, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, you have watched some of the uh, meetings on video, past meetings on, on video before tonight. And then do you... Yep, and um, the workshop, and the, the budget workshop. workshop that was just the other week. Yes, and we've had conversations about what is expected in terms of you know, at this time of year, often weekly meetings um, and, uh, the, you know, re hearing all of the warrant articles, making decisions about how we, how we view those and advising the town. Um, and you've been here, obviously, tonight watching this, this meeting. Uh, do, you, do you have any questions of the committee right now about what we do or anything like that? Um, Just so you know, I had no, a I, think I had a conversation with Brianna about a forty-five minute conversation last week. So I, I think I probably got her up to speed. <laughs> yes, no, um, she did a great job explaining everything. Um, I think even this just goes to show how dedicated I am um, to, you know, being a part of this. It is. You know, weekly um, definitely can accommodate those meetings, being at the meetings. Um, so I just, yeah, would really like to join the committee. Does anybody have any uh, any questions for Brianna? Uh, I just want to say thank you for applying, and, and I really, this might be somewhat inappropriate. Appreciate that you're a young person coming on here. I do think you might bring a different perspective to things, and I certainly do appreciate thank you. that. It, it is hard for us to find younger people who can Thank find the much. time yeah. to, to do this. Um, and I think, too, the work that you do, social services, um, I, gives you a very a great perspective on some of the challenges that we have in this community. 
which come home to roost here in the Finance Committee and many of the other committees. So um, I think you, you'll bring a great perspective, understanding really how our community works and sometimes, and, and clearly a lot of the challenges and maybe through uh, Finance Committee work we can work, identify those and, and push the folks that maybe need to uh, provide some more help and assistance. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. That we, we really appreciate it, and we will we will let you go because <laughs> you're obviously very busy. But thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for making the effort, and um, we I will be in touch with you to talk about next next steps. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, Brianna. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Um, and if anybody has any comments, if they would just like to send me an individual private note, mm -hmm. uh, let me know what you think. I have already put the appointing authority on notice that we had an applicant that we will want to be considering. So I, that, that's not scheduled yet, but it hopefully will happen soon. All right. And, and just as a, as a reminder, and Dom's not here tonight, but um, so we have seven people on the committee right now. Dom and Matt and I all expire in June, and Dom is not eligible to well, reapply. He's got to wait a year. He's got to wait a year. So uh, we would, at that point, be at best be down to six. So even though we are looking at ultimately reducing the number in the short term, if we have more members, it will work out. It, it will work out. Mm -hmm. It will work out. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, does anybody have any liaison reports tonight? I have, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 you're, you're no. on my right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with, start with yeah. right. um, One interesting thing that uh, popped up with the uh, Wareham um, affordable housing is um, we uh, have a, a local developer in town, Steve Boschman. He's done... Um, uh, a project on Depot Street, Chapel Hill, very responsive, sits in every single meeting he's required and not required to sit, out, sit in on, um, friendly 40 Bs, and um, he is, and I know from my real estate background that 15 Gibbs have the old school administration building right next to the um, thrift shop associated with the Congregational Church, almost right before the split between Gibbs and High Street. Yep. It's a beautiful building on the outside. The, um, the current owner, he actually bought it from the town um, and never um, made it weather tight. It just, I, I've actually shown it to a few prospective buyers and they just wash their hands. It's raining, and um, Steve Boschman is has gone in front of Wareham Affordable Trust, um, looking for support, wants to renovate, not raise, renovate, and possibly add additional units, which the lot can certainly take. It's not in the um, the uh, I'm blanking on the term. It's he has no sewer, so oh, it's, a, it's, it's on Title septic. Or yeah. is it Title it's going to have to be Title right. Five, Title which five. takes up a lot of room. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. Oh, I do know Sandy Slavin loves him to death, so <laughs> who knows? Um, so um, other than the the typical things that are going on on the affordable trust, that was. Um, a very nice surprising thing because that building is just gonna sit. Um, it's been on the market for well over a year and like I said it's just getting worse and worse and worse um, condition wise. So um, yeah I was very happy to hear that. Al Alan's looking to say something. So uh, Alan Slavin just joined us, and Alan, do you have um, do you have a comment on that? Hold on one second, he's uh, oh. There he is. All right, hi Alan. He's muted at the moment. You're muted at the moment. There he 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh and yeah. there's Sandy. Oh, Speaking Sandy. of Sandy. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> yeah, we're away right now, so uh, I've got three meetings going at the same time. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's sunny where you are, so it's it's obviously far west. <laughs> It's only 65. Oh, nice. Okay. And uh, did you have um, did you have a comment you want to make? I, yes, I did. Okay. Um, I joined listening to the one at 15 Gibbs at the old um, Everett School. They have they are on sewer. They have come for the sewer commissioners to get the increase flow oh. for the two additional buildings they want to put up for more affordable housing units. So they're gonna be building units, I think a total of 26 for the whole lot. So they're working on getting a permission for sewer, even though we have a moratorium on them. But you're right, Heidi, I do very much appreciate and enjoy working with him on his projects that he's been doing for affordable housing in the town of Wareham. They're low key, they're small, and they're very effective. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize it was in sewer. That was, that's nice. That allows and them to build more. And they're outside of the historic district. Oh, that's even better. Because the historic district ends where the meeting house is. So they don't have to worry about the historic district commission and the, and the complications that would um, offer for the project. Yeah. So he's not in historic district. So presumably at some point we may be seeing a, a, a CPC request right. on this right. project is, is right. what you're saying. Oh, I would expect so. Okay. It could be what you're saying. All right. We'll, and, and when the time comes, we will we'll consider it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Until then, I will refrain from commenting on it. <laughs> Jerry? I was just going to say the Capital Planning Committee met a couple of times, and we're... Uh, Probably we'll have something uh, firmed up for both the annual and the spring special by the end of March. Okay. So we will talk about when you yeah, can, then we can probably we can be right, it. right toward the end that yeah. you can present. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Um, liaison Planning Board. Um, been at a number of meetings, um, and I think what is taking up a lot of the um, Planning Board's time right now are solar projects particularly the battery issue, um, the um, decommissioning of projects, um, the amount of uh, deforestation that will go on, tree cutting, and it's just, it's a real challenge for the planning board because many of these projects, they're still waiting for Eversource to do the interconnection agreement, and you're looking at two and three and four years out before a shovel goes in the ground. And so I think this, one of the struggles for the planning board is how to predict the future. Um, it's new technology, even though we have other technology that may replace it before they even get to what, uh, putting anything in the ground. But there is concerns, the planning board, health safety of the community is really important. So there, it's, it's a struggle a bit. They've done great work, they ask good questions, and they're you know, very supportive of the developers. But you, it, you really understand when you have new technology like that and you are asked to approve a project that you know a permit may not be pulled for three years, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? Can you put conditions now on that? So it's a, it's a struggle and we're not, we have a lot more projects I think than many communities, mm -hmm. but um, there is not a lot of direction. Uh, the state is still working through the regulations. so. They've done yeoman's work, but it's it's a real challenge. The other thing that um, that they are looking at and have made clear their position is folks who um, submit things last minute, 4.30 before a meeting and expect action. Um, we have new rules and regulations that they're, they're producing, uh, which I think will make it clear to folks going forward, you need a week, Wednesday before, the week before, get us everything we need. So, you know, there's some di disciplines developing and, and certainly working with developers, but I think it's going to alleviate some of the um, challenges and burden on the planning office, which we know with Ken leaving and, you know, the rework is going to be, uh, you know, is, is going to need some support. Um, 
And I think the other is um, what they are also looking at is folks who fail to appear. Mm. They're on the agenda. Uh, agendas are tight. There are so many people waiting to get on the agenda, and then they don't appear. So the planning board is thinking about it, talking about it, you know, publicly at the meetings. How should we deal with a project where no one shows up, and they expect action? So, you know, it's just those are some of the things that I'm watching as liaison. A lot of uh, a lot of challenges, but they're up. They're certainly up to the task. I watched the meeting Monday night. Saw you sitting there. You just shake your head sometimes listening to this stuff, you know, you I say, know. boy, yeah. they work through a lot. They do. They work through a real lot. They sure do. They sure do. But anyway, they're good work they're doing regardless. So, it's all good. That's my report. All right. All right. That's, uh, I think, it for, you know, my, my liaisons are the town administrator and the select board. And we Heard a lot from the select board tonight, uh, and I missed. And my meeting with, uh, with the town administrator didn't happen today because he was in a union contract ne negotiation of some sort. Um, all right. So uh, reminders: um, four of the six people in this room have provided me with their uh, their conflict of interest training certificates, and their um, and I know that have copied me on their acknowledgement of the code of conduct and discriminatory discriminatory harassment policy mm -hmm. receipt. So I, out mine, so I would, get mine. will appreciate getting the yeah. rest uh, as, as soon as possible. Um, and I don't, except for Mr. Slavin, I don't see a member of the, of the public out here. Um, so I don't know that we, the last item is public comment at the discretion of the chair. And uh, I don't see anyone who appears to need to make a public comment. So, Alan, wishes to. Al, Alan, do you wish to make a co public comment? Uh, actually, because I had problems with our equipment out here, I was just curious what the report was from the chair on the school regarding the possible override request. I think there will not be a request for an override. Uh, <coughs> is the is the short answer. the The longer answer is I thought we have productive meeting. <coughs> I think uh, the dialogue continues. Um, and uh, we, 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 I think everyone in this room knows how limited our resources are and that we are all doing the best that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Al. All right. Well, I don't have any unanticipated items to bring up. Our next, I have our next meeting is March 6th. Uh, I don't... I don't know that we're going to have anybody ready to come before us, but I'll reach out to the citizens tomorrow and see. You know, chances are we will defer that meeting to the next week. Okay. Uh, unless oh, somebody has a burning need to, to meet. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. It, all right. There's, there is no discussion. It, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? We are adjourned. 6-0-0. Six, six, zero, zero. Night, Alan.